Uh, the next impairment to be connect, uh, corrected is uh, chromatic dispersion and we have seen a uh, great detail of uh, chromatic dispersion compensation in our uh, DCF module, dispersion compensating uh, module. So, I am not going into the details now here and we have also seen the uh, this particular uh, in fact, the same slide last time uh, where we can model the transfer function due to chromatic dispersion as uh, e power j half beta 2 omega square z and the amplitude magnitude response is flat and there is a quadratic phase uh, response for this filter. So, the equalizer is uh, simply multiplication by inverse of uh, h of omega in the frequency domain. So, that is what is done here. So, you calculate the uh, beta 2 from your d and from the beta 2 you calculate half omega square beta 2 that is the exponent. So, the C d factor is actually the half beta 2 omega square times the length of the fiber that is what you have calculated here. So, you, you model the chromatic dispersion in the uh, frequency domain. So, you would need to now do an IFFT to get your signal back in the time domain. Uh, now, to compensate for that all you need to do is to multiply it with the inverse T inverse is exponential minus J C D factor the same C D factor and after you multiplied my the FFT of the received symbols with the inverse of the uh, transfer function corresponding to C D you do an IFFT you get your received symbols ok. So, that is a very simple. Uh, uh, methodology any amount of CD can be compensated with this and this is also independent of modulation formats. So, this is how the symbol looks like after before CD compensation this is after CD compensation. The next impairment is polarization mixing and polarization mode dispersion. So, let us see what polarization mixing is we have already seen this you have the principal states of polarization at the input as let us say along these directions, but as the uh, electric field propagates through the fiber the polarization states rotate and so you have the output states here. And then uh, you also know that the uh, polarization diverse coherent receiver has a polarization beam splitter. So, only a fraction of what you call as x polarization is actually falling on the x uh, polarization arm reference arm of the PPS. So, the resultant is that the result is that uh, your output is a fraction of your input it is a root of alpha it is a, it's a rotation um, uh, transformation. So, it is characterized by root of alpha root of 1 minus 1 minus alpha and 1, mi one minus alpha and uh, root of 1 minus alpha and uh, root alpha. Where is this additional phase coming from? So, in addition to uh, polarization mixing there is also a polarization uh, mode dispersion which means that the x polarization and y polarization have a walk off they have a phase accumulated between them and that is what is repre represented by this e power j uh, uh, delta and e power minus j delta where 2 delta is the phase delay between the two polarizations. How do you compensate for this? Now, this particular algorithm we are discussing for polarization uh, uh, demultiplexing is uh, dependent on the modulation format. So, what I am discussing now is constant modulation constant modulus algorithm which relies on the fact that all the four constellation points in a QPSK uh, modulation is lying on the radius of the same circle ok. So, uh, what we want to do is actually to get the input back we want to be able to invert this matrix. So, we are trying to find the four elements which are uh, p x x, p x y and p y x and p y y which is actually the elements of the inverse of this matrix ok. Now, uh, how does one do that? As I said earlier the algorithm relies on the fact that uh, only on the fact that all these uh, received points received vectors should lie on the same radius. So, how do you go about understanding this algorithm? So, let us say we start with p x x, p x y, p y x and p y y as unknowns. So, let us start with this as 1 0 and uh, 0 1 to start with ok. And we know that, uh, so this is of course, the ideal uh, transfer matrix and uh, we know that uh, your x is uh, x polarized the electric field corresponding to x polarization is now a linear combination of uh, the input x and your input y. So, you try to construct your electric field uh, for the x polarization and the corresponding one for the y polarization ok. So, with with those constructed electric fields let us take the uh, example of uh, x polarization. 
uh, let us say this is your received constellation point ok. You have the received symbol here. What you are trying to do in this algorithm is trying you are trying to push this received uh, symbol close to the nearest uh, uh, all the received symbol close to a circle of constant radius ok. So, what you will do is you find an error vector which is your y of k square which is the uh, symbol square received symbol square minus r square where so r is the radius corresponding to your uh, qpsk constellation ok. So, uh, you keep updating so you calculate your mod e x square and you of course have to feed in your r square you calculate your error and this a e of k uh, will feed to uh, just like in the adaptive algorithm we saw earlier we this goes back and updates this uh, p x x variable and similarly uh, it also updates the p x y variable ok. And the E y n similarly the electric field corresponding to y is reconstructed and that E y is used to uh, the error corresponding to E y is again used to update these two coefficients ok. So, you are continuously updating p x x, p x y, p y x and p y y. Now, what you would try to do in your update is that you try to minimize the cost function and what is a cost function? Cost function is equal to the expectation value of the error ok and what is that error? Error is of course, we have seen that it is uh, y of k square minus r k square and every time you are updating, you are updating the weights of the adaptive filter and so this uh, w k is what is getting uh, updated and so this is your cost function that needs to get minimized in your CMA. So, when the, co the cost function is actually minimized when this uh, y of k square falls on a circle with the radius r. So, the update equations in this case for each of this is uh, corresponding to uh, p x x and p y. Of course, the weight uh, here is p x x and uh, p y y. So, p x x and p x y and the other good thing is uh, that you have p x x, p x y, p y x and p y y and this is a uh, invertible transformation it is a reciprocal device. So, this uh, matrix is uh, in uh, unitary matrix and because of that you do not have to update all 4 coefficients you can just update p x x and uh, p x y you can uh, you can follow this uh, condition satisfied by the unitary matrix and say that p y y is uh, conjugate of p x x and p y x is equal to minus conjugate of p x y. Okay. So, you just can need to update 2 adaptive filters and you can uh, get back to a converged uh, weight just like in the previous case you need to look for convergence uh, in terms of uh, mu and in terms of the number of symbols. Unlike the phase noise cancellation you do not have to keep updating for every sample point. So, once the weights of the filters have converged you can assume that for a uh, next burst the entire time uh, burst of 125 microsecond the polarization is not fluctuating so fast and so you can use the same updated weight for the entire symbol. So, the typical frame size for an SDH uh, frame is about 125 mi microseconds uh, there is a certain uh, header time that is allotted. So, use you could use that time to actually arrive at converged weights for such algorithms and then once you have converged the wa uh, weights you you can presume that the rest of the during the rest of the frame you do not really need to update the weights of the filter right. Because polarization is a slowly varying quantity relatively slowly varying quantity the time scales at which polarizations change in a system is of the order of millisecond. So, in a frame size or maybe even in multiple frames. Uh, you could assume the same value of uh, p x x the same converged value for all these uh, filter taps filter coefficients. So, here is the uh, MATLAB code for that. So, what you do is to construct your e x out and e y out and then you take the differences from the radius and then you modify the uh, x x and x y. Uh, with the update equations that we have discussed earlier. And of course, as I said earlier the y y and y x can be derived from x x and x y and you run it in a loop for uh, L samples you do not have to necessarily do it for your entire time sequence 
you can plot the convergence of pxx pxy you will see that the values do not change after a certain number of symbols and once that has uh, happened you need not do this process again and again you can actually uh, use the converged values of pxx pxy and that is how you reconstruct your data. Uh, so, here is uh, how a uh, constellation looks uh, before CMA and after CMA. Uh, before the uh, constant modulus algorithm, you have the x and y polarization mixed and after you carry out the algorithm, this is how it looks like. The question is next is we also talked about uh, polarization mode dispersion. Question is can you use the same algorithm to correct for polarization mode dispersion? The answer is uh, yes. Uh, simply because the polarization mode dispersion is like a uh, uh, FIR filter, finite impulse uh, response filter where the impulse response is for a finite duration which means that the value of the present symbol is uh, decided by the value of a couple of neighboring symbols depending on how much is the dispersion. So, the way to take care of polarization mode dispersion is to say that instead of saying that this pxx or the corresponding filter tap w as a matrix of a single element, you can say that this is a matrix of uh, k elements. The number of taps is decided by the number of symbols that get affected by uh, polarization mode dispersion. Right? So, you can design this as a multi tap uh, FIR uh, filter and you could write the uh, equations, the, uh, the update equations for the multi tap filter. Let us say because of polarization mode dispersion, the information in a specific bit is spreading into three different uh, neighboring bits. Okay? So, we would require a three tap filter. So, I could write my uh, y of n as uh, let us say um, w of uh, 0 times uh, x of n plus uh, w of 1 times uh, x of n minus 1 plus w of 2 times let us say x of n minus 2. Right? So, instead of finding out one value of weight which is maybe 1 p x x, you will need to find out p x x as a function, uh, you need to find out correspondingly p x x 0, p x x uh, 1 and p x x uh, 2 using similar uh, update equations. So, this is something that can be taken care as far as uh, polarization mode dispersion is concerned. So, the next important thing is how do you sequence these algorithms. Now, these algorithms independently we know that they uh, can work very well. Uh, in a system they get impaired in a different way, but uh, what you get at the receiver is uh, a cascaded output of all these uh, impairments. So, it is not necessary that you have to keep uh, uh, you know applying these algorithms in the same way that they got impaired. So, the way to do it is first of all um, you need to do a resampling in the ADC at the ADC output. So, let us say you had this uh, uh, ADC, let us say you have an ADC which is running at 100 Gbps. right? Uh, Let us say you have an ADC, let us say you have an ADC which has uh, which is running at uh, 100 uh, giga samples per second and you have a 25 giga baud uh, symbol that is coming in. So, which means that you already have 4 samples per uh, uh, symbol. Now, you could increase that to uh, let us say 8 samples or 10 samples per symbol and that is what is done in the resampling process. Remember you have data coming in from i, q, x and uh, uh, from both x and y polarization. So, what you do first is to do a resampling operation to a convenient number of uh, samples. The first impairment that we typically correct is C D compensation because that is a very specific um, uh, impairment and as a result of uh, C D compensation you had the constellation completely smeared. It is a very definite and predictive impairment. So, you can do the compensation very easily. So, first you apply the C D compensation algorithm for both the channels and then what you do is correct for the frequency offset. Now, frequency offset using uh, the periodogram technique whatever technique we uh, uh, described as called as a periodogram technique. So, you use the periodogram technique to correct for the uh, frequency offset. The next process to be done is uh, digital clock recovery, which means that out of the 10 samples that you have per symbol, 
you need to pick now one sampling point. So, what you typically do is to uh, do the eye diagram at that uh, uh, with all the samples that you have, uh, pick those samples corresponding to maximum eye opening. So, uh, converting from 10 samples and choosing the right sampling point to further process your data is your digital clock recovery process. And so, you have clearly said that this is the point at which I am deciding whether my sam uh, bit is a 1 or a 0. After you give, get to one sample per symbol, that is when you start doing your polarization multiplexing or demultiplexing and the equalization for that. Once you do that, you could do the carrier phase estimation. You can do the phase noise correction and uh, compensate for the phase noise and in the end you can do the decision. So, this is how the uh, result of the process would look like. Uh, so, this is the received sample in the x and y polarization. So, this is a simulation done for uh, 25 sorry 25 dB OSNR line width is uh, 100 uh, kilohertz. Uh, frequency detuning between the laser and the local oscillator signal and the local oscillator is uh, 1 gigahertz and uh, the received samples in the x and y polarization are looking like this. Once you remove the uh, carry out the CD compensation, uh, this is what it looks like and after uh, carrying out the uh, and the polarization uh, demultiplexing, this is how it looks like, it is still not opened up. And then you do your frequency compensation, frequency offset compensation, uh, you get your uh, constellations coming out and after your clock recovery and the final x pole and y pole after the derotation, this is how it looks like. So, this sequence of algorithm is uh, fairly well established now and uh, you can try out some of these algorithms on your own.